So I am sipping on some green tea. I have decided that I'm gonna go on a coffee strike for this entire week. These days I've just been getting extremely bad acid reflux and heartburn at around 11 a.m. And I suspect that it's because I'm just pounding the coffee too fast. Now that I'm getting older, I'm just getting more bad reactions. I'm just getting a lot more heartburn, a lot more stomach pain. So I just have to be like kind of gentle on my gut where I'm gonna be going over some skincare questions. So I think it's time for an afternoon distressor. So I actually booked a ticket to a private island Yes, I am talking about Animal Crossing New Horizons. I've got my Nintendo Switch here, and we're gonna buckle on up and head on over to Dodo Airlines. Also, huge thank you to Nintendo for sponsoring this portion of the vlog. It's unreal, and thank you so much. My island is nowhere near any of those pristine islands that you see all over social media. Uh, it's a work in progress. I also only play this game for the pure purpose of relaxation, and I don't put stress on it. Now, honestly, I feel like once you see my island, it will make you feel a lot better about yours. <laughs> I feel like because the world has been feeling quite uncertain for some period of time, it's nice to come to this little haven where I can customize customize everything from my character, I can decorate my home, I can change up my island whenever I feel like it. First up, that's me. Hi. I'm wearing a nice little distressed sweater. I've got my little cowboy boots. Here's my little workstation, which I'm very proud of. It took me a very long time to do that. Let me, let me show you my house now. I really like the way I decorated everything so far. It's very kiddish and just kind of whimsical and quirky. Over here is my actual bedroom, again, bunny day themed. Here's my bed in a nice seafoam color. I've got a little stack of books. That's my room, guys. The way you customize is through crafting. So you collect all these materials around your island like iron nuggets, gold nuggets, rocks, clay, sticks. And then you go to this workshop and then you can create anything from furniture to tools. I love the little chores that I can do here, like, you know, gardening. Here I've got these pumpkins that are perfect for the fall. Oh my gosh, and then here are my neighbors. This is one of my favorite characters, Diana. She is so freaking cute. I've never ever had a island resident that I didn't like. Actually, Renee took some warming up to do, but I love her now. So now that it's fall, there's actually a new update where you can collect special fall items like acorns, pine cones, and mushrooms. I am very excited about the mushrooms. And you can collect all of them and then you can craft unique season DIY recipes. There's also new fish and bugs in November in the Northern Hemisphere, like tuna and blue marlin at the pier or the tricky tarantula. If you guys have never played Animal Crossing New Horizons, I highly recommend it. I don't know what you're waiting for. It's truly the best game ever. I will leave all the information in the description box so make sure you hit that open. And once again, thank you so much Nintendo for sponsoring this portion of the vlog. All right, I'm gonna get back on my island. We've got some chores to do. That is the side that is right. And currently, in feminism, there is a fading image of what was being talked about. Um, and so, learning all of those things. Like wow. Guys, that was so freaking cool. We just did a live discussion on my book club. Such a cool experience. I have always been kind of skeptical about the, not the legitimacy of Zoom, but I never thought that I would be able to like really connect just through pixels. But that was something else, guys. And I loved how intimate it was. And uh, thank you so much to everyone that spoke because it takes a lot to speak up. So I'm glad that we all got to exercise that part of us and just kind of come to the arena. Oh, perfect, okay, thank you. All right, folks, I just pulled up to the arts district. I'm gonna go to the nail box because I am dying for a manicure and a pedicure. I have not gotten my nails or my toes done since 
March. I've got two huge video campaigns in this week and so I just want to I just want one less thing to worry about because I'm gonna be you know showcasing some jewelry so I want to make sure that my nails are looking tip-top for the entire week and also what I love about nail box is that it opens up like a garage like the whole side of the wall it opens and so it's well ventilated and the air is circulating and I've got my mask on all right guys these are my nails before i think because i'm right-handed the nails tend to break a lot more Ooh, oh my god I, they're so barren and just a, a chipped little mess daylight savings was on Sunday and so now the Sun just goes down so much quicker like it's not even five o'clock but it's already so dark and dreary I really am the type of person to just come animated in the daytime like I feel more hopeful I feel more inspired and at night I can't help but feel you know feelings of despair I don't understand why it's necessary to have daylight savings anymore. I remember there was a proposition where they just wanted to stop daylight savings. I voted for to not have daylight savings anymore. What's going on with that? I think we're gonna need a follow up. Circling back here, someone asked which underwear is the best underwear and it's this underwear. This is by the brand Uniqlo. It's their Airism Seamless Panty. I literally have one in every color. It's just so comfortable, so breathable. I have like five or six of the nude ones. These are crucial for every woman's delicate drawer, if you will, because whenever you wear something clingy on the bottom, like you don't see your panty line. They're also extremely comfortable. Like look at the butt, like yeah. It really like covers you in. Ben got this underwear for me last year for Valentine's Day, it was like a pack of 20. He got it on Amazon. It's like literally there's like no brand. It's just like made in China. It, but I must say this is super comfortable. But when I wear it, oh my gosh, it just, it's not the most flattering, but you know, it's a thought that counts. See, another airism. Love this one. This one's the best. Good afternoon, everyone. We are currently on our way to shoot the eight other reasons Gen M edit which is insane. It's gonna be sold at Nordstrom. I know that was a lot to drop, but yeah, we're, we're currently on our way to the shoot right now. And honestly, my stomach is in knots a little bit. I have not been on a shoot in so, so long, especially to this type of production. We've got the dream team waiting at the studio. These are the closest people that have been working with me for so long. So I'm really, really excited that we get to finally make something freaking sick. We've got Ben here, the videographer. Hey guys. I think you guys know him. So this collection is gonna be for holiday. And so the vibe I was going for was kind of like glam rock meets front woman bands like Susie and the Banshees, even like Courtney Love, any type of front woman who just does not give a fuck. I got the goods. Oh my god, so this is the wig that Preston has created. Preston killed it. So this is inspired by the Fendi show in Italy. I think it was the fall winter 2019. But I saw it on the runway and I was like, I need, I need to use this in some way. This is the moment of truth. This is gonna be either the best thing that's ever happened in the shoot or I might completely crumble. Oh, oh. Moment of truth. I it's so it. good. <laughs> Wait, Jen, you look so cute. I think I we need to give you like really rosy cheeks and like a brighter lip, but like keep the eyes kind of neutral. Yes. I feel like I own this club. I feel like I'm in Studio 54 right now in the back room. Jalapeno, jalapeno. Tip of my tongue. Yeah, it's what I like. What a day, guys. It is 
8.30. The shoot went incredible. Photos came out amazing. I feel so drained. I can't believe I used to do this like every month last year. Oh, by the way, this pony that I'm wearing is by INH. I think it's called the Lola Pony, but this pony tail had a moment today as well. It just does the perfect little swoop, like a little boop. It's very 60s. We really tackled all the eras today. We time traveled and now it's time to stop time. Before I left, look how small my ponytail is. Look. Out of that. You can't see, but I paid off my home loan. Yeah. This is the current state of our closet. Not great. Um, yeah, it's one of those things that I kept on putting off and off and off. And I think this is like attributing to some of the stress that's going on in my head. I think because I'm surrounded by clutter, it's like exaggerating the emotions that I'm feeling. And so I thought that today I would just really, really tackle each nook and cranny of my house. Actually, let me take it back. I don't know if we're gonna do all the nooks and crannies, but definitely this cranny. I think I was just really inspired because I was like organizing the stuff around my room in Animal Crossing. I was like, wait a minute, I should probably do this in real life as well. I want to do a purge of the house. So this is something that I'm gonna have to part ways with. I don't really wear like normal sweaters, like everything I wear is cropped. So I feel like if I cropped this, I would get some more wear out of it. But uh, do I need more hoodies? I think I just need to stop thinking about it. No, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna donate this. And over here, we've got another piece that I've just been hanging on for, for dear life. I have not worn this in years, but every time I look at it, I'm like, oh my gosh, how cute. This is like, this would be a great, like Charlie Brown outfit. Like I always think that, oh, I'm gonna wear this for Halloween. That's always my excuse. But then when Halloween rolls around, I don't do it. I think it's time to part ways with some old pajama shirts. Remember when I used to always wear this to bed? Free bread! This is one of those dresses where I feel like, ooh, one day I'm gonna look really good in this, but this is just like a super unflattering shape for me. You know what I'm realizing? I feel like I should be trying on the clothes and purging. No, we're not doing that today. I just, I, 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 I'm, just, I'm just procrastinating. We're just gonna keep trucking along. All right, guys, here is the after. It's not that much of a difference, except for the fact that I could see the floor here. Uh. Not completely transformative, but enough to boost my mood for sure. A lot of you guys are curious where I got these like mint slash sage sweatpants. These are by the brand Skims. This is part of their waffle collection. So soft, very comfortable. Only annoying thing is that it doesn't have any pockets. However, it does fit better because it doesn't have pockets. So underneath, I'm wearing another little stretch knit rib from Skims, but the sweater is actually different. This is from Stalananda. And if you guys saw my camping trip, you could see that the mustard stain completely disappeared. Nah. So yeah, this is my chillin' at home outfit. Uh, I feel super cozy. It's actually pretty cold today. We are taking Little Murky to the shop today. The engine light has been on for, I wanna say like a couple of weeks. And then finally we got an alert saying that the that just like the air in the tires are like severely low. Anytime that the color is red, it just gives me anxiety. So I'm not gonna lie, even driving this right now, I was like, oh, like please just make it for a couple more miles. You got this baby. I don't know how long this process is gonna take. So I brought my Atlantic. Yes, I got a subscription to the Atlantic. 
I noticed that when I'm, whenever I'm listening to a podcast, a lot of guests refer to Atlantic articles. So I was like, maybe that's what I need to get. I'll give you guys my first impressions on the Atlantic in a little bit. But when I got this in the mail, I was so, so, so excited. first paragraph of this dude that was very short and snappy amazing in my schedule i allotted two hours for this car maintenance situation but it literally took like 15 minutes so i am home i am currently in the reading room because i thought that i would kind of go over my experience with the new yorker and just kind of give you guys a little update about my reading list so the thing with the new yorkers is yes they stack up. This is only like a month and a half because they they come up with an issue every week. And for months, I was right on track. The little pieces about just like random albums that dropped to the the like the short stories to the cover stories. I was I was reading it like a book. But then I realized that my Kindle wasn't getting as much attention because to, in order to finish like a magazine like this, it probably takes me around three and a half solid hours. Like that's a lot of reading time just for this. I feel like my to read list is constantly growing and the fact that I wasn't meeting any of my reading goals for like book wise, it was kind of, you know, looming over my head. So this, this is when I just kind of gave myself a break on the New Yorker and now what I do is I'll read every cover story, which is like two. Those are like the big chunky, stories and then if like a small story doesn't seem that fun to me i will just pass by it sorry so this is my first issue of the atlantic i'm super excited about this one this one is for october and from the jump i feel like the atlantic is a lot easier to read than the new yorker i feel like with the new yorker since there's so many writers who contribute to this there's like there's just so many different writing styles. And I'm sorry, like sometimes when the writer gets like too floral with their words and it almost comes like abstract to me. And I'm just kind of like, you kind of lost me here. I feel like the Atlantic writing is a lot more straightforward. I mean, it's still like descriptive, but out of the, out of the three articles I read, the Atlantic seems more more like condensed and to the point which i like i feel like maybe because the atlantic just comes out once a month it's like i guess like it, it's harder to make the cut in each issue as opposed to the new yorker since it's weekly they you know they just aggregate a lot so yeah that's an update about my slow journalism journey if you guys are just like tuning in and just wondering why the heck i have so many magazines now <laughs> it's because in June, I realized that highly processed media was just not cutting it for me. And highly processed media is essentially media that you just get on social media when it's just like little infographics, just like little blips of a video that's on Twitter and not really giving you the whole comp comprehensive story. It's just giving you like short, sensationalized, bite-sized pieces that can be completely out of context or not fact-checked. The issue with the internet is that there's not many gatekeepers that are filtering out the proper information. I mean, and I'm not saying that this is like the complete whole truth, but honestly, slower journalism takes more time. There's a lot more editors that have to look at it and review it. There's, they, they fact check. So I feel like this is closer for me to understand with what, what's going on in the world than just constantly scrolling through social media. It's not very often where I'm like scrolling on, on Instagram or like TikTok or any type of social media device other than like YouTube. Like I, I actually feel more empty. So now let's talk about my current reads. Um, I am currently almost finished with Leaders Eat Last. This book was on one of those like, if you have a business, you should read this. And I was like, okay. So far, it's all right. I feel like there's nothing that I'm reading that in this book where I'm just like, oh, like I never thought about treating my employees with respect. I never thought that the people that I work with are actually people. I, did, I don't need like reminding that I need to treat the people that I work with with empathy and respect. It just seems pretty obvious, but but 
There was one chapter that I found really interesting, which is about all the all of the chemical compounds in your brain that create happiness. So there's dopamine, endorphins, serotonin, and oxytocin. These four chemicals, they've always been thrown around. Like yes, they're like the happy drugs, the happy chemicals, but I didn't know like what they actually did and how these chemicals serve to make human beings happy. Just to give you guys a quick little regurgitation. So endorphins are essentially the natural opiate in your body. Like it happens to mask pain. That's why they say you get a runner's high. Like after you run and you've kind of like not destroyed your body, but like it's it's strained. It's been working and that's why it releases this pleasure chemical being like good job. Or like sometimes like when you're laughing so hard, it hurts, but you're laughing. So then there's dopamine. And dopamine is is released when you complete a cycle. It's that burst that keeps you motivated. Your brain loves when there is a beginning to an end sequence, and it's always released when you finish that loop. So for example, I get a dopamine hit when I upload a video. I get a dopamine hit even when like I finish like a, a movie or a book. But these loops don't necessarily mean that they have to be positive. Like you'd get a dopamine hit when you have your cigarette, uh, when you gamble. Dopamine can be released in a bunch of different ways. And then there is serotonin, which is kind of like the community drug that like makes you feel connected to the people around you. These are the selfless chemicals. And lastly, we have oxytocin, which is like the deep love chemical. Like this is like a deep trusted bond. I have it with Ben. Like I have it with like my best friends. Like it's that it's that feeling of security and just like pure love, you know, like full trusted love. It's that love that you've built for years. So yeah, those are the four happy chemicals. I respect what he's doing and they're great reminders. So I am 49% done with that. And then I just finished this book called The Wife Stalker by Liz Constantine. This is the same author who wrote The Last Mrs. Parage. That's like one of my favorite thrillers. Uh, she came out with a new book called The Wife Stalker and um, I finished it, but it wasn't it wasn't as like gripping as the last Mrs. Parrish. I just like both characters were just completely unlikable. So the Wife Stalker is essentially about a woman named Joanna who gets into like a divorce with her husband and she's just basically like trying to win him back, but then he's like dating this new girl named Piper, and so it's just I'll just leave it at that. I now I get to have some time to relax and just read for an hour. This is great. <laughs>